Hello everyone. Thanks for watching Aeropedia World videos. We are going to cover SAP finance and controlling as a topic in the coming few videos. But first, I would like to start with the overview of SAP itself. SAP is actually an ERP and what an ERP stands for is Enterprise Resource Planning which is a generic package by which we plan and control various resources and activities in an organization. ERP is a generic term used to describe a comprehensive information system designed to integrate all the business processes which are found in an enterprise or in an organization. Two main parameters, efficiency and productivity, these two are improved through this integration of information and the removal of duplicate information and processes. That is what an ERP stands for. Now let's see what are the key point of views. One is a management point of view and the next slide would be the customer point of view. So why is an ERP required in an organization from a management point of view? Here you will see that you need to consolidate data, you need to share this data, you need to have quick answers available for management in a company, you need to have transparency and operational clarity, improved functional coordination, better forecasting, budgeting and planning, you need to achieve lower operational costs in a company on a daily basis, you need to also improve your customer response time. You need to improve your speed to the market, which is your cycle time of your product. And you need to improve your profitability. So the management of a company will always look at these things and they will try to get these benefits out of an ERP. Now let's look from the customer point of view. The customer point of view is that the customer expectations are increasingly higher and in this growing world, you will see that these expectations are increasing on a daily basis very, very uh, speedily. They want better quality of products, of services. They also want it at a lower price. Customers also want flexibility and customization. They want the product to be delivered faster. And finally, they want more reliability. And this is what an ERP can provide to an organization. Now look at the ERP benefits. First of all, what does the ERP increase in a company? It increases the control across operations and functions. It increases your resource utilization in a company. There is also an increase in transparency in your processes which are used in a company. There is an increase in the flexibility and response. There is of course an increase in revenue and profitability because that derives your growth in a company. And finally, it increases customer satisfaction. On the other hand, ERP also helps you decrease inventory, which is lying for a really long time in a go down or a factory shop. It also helps you decrease operational costs. It helps you decrease waste in a company. It helps you decrease time to respond to different questions, either by management or by the customers. It helps you decrease the cycle time. And finally, it helps you decrease customer delays and also decrease customer complaints. So these are the benefits of an ERP system. Now let's look at SAP specifically. In the market, you have a lot of ERP products available. Mainly the leaders are SAP, Oracle, JD Edwards, and then for some small and medium sized companies, you have some smaller packages available globally as well as in India. Let's look at SAP. What does SAP stand for? It stands for systems, applications and products in data processing. 
SAP is an ERP package which was developed by SAP AG which is based on, in Germany. So as you must know SAP is a German company and SAP is also a product of this company. This company was started by five former IBM employees way back in 1972 and since then it has had a lot of products and developments and they finally found and released the SAP R3 system in 1992. And even since then there have been various updates and innovations in the SAP R3 architecture. And finally, SAP R3 system is a three-tier client server technology. We'll look into this in the next coming slides. So why SAP? Why do companies implement SAP and why do large organizations as well as medium-sized organizations choose SAP as an ERP product? First of all, SAP is the world's leading provider of business software and solutions. It also provides the best solutions to every type of industry and service sector. It delivers the solutions that provide strong integration within your various functions in an organization. The scalability of the product is very high. It also provides you high security which is also very essential for companies, especially where data is involved so much. Information is maintained by single database at central level. SAP also supports many interfaces and cross applications by which the information exchange and communication is possible. SAP also supports many languages. For example, they support English, German, French, and many other languages which are used on a global level. SAP is a single platform environment in which all business processes can customize and integrate to each other. Flexibility to choose any operating system or any data management system. Around the world, all the industries and service sectors are using SAP solutions either at some or the other stage of in the company and this is used mainly to improve their customer relationships and drive efficiencies across their supply chain and business operations. Let's also look at what are the key modules within SAP. Whether you are a consultant for SAP or whether we are trying to become a consultant in SAP or you are an end user in SAP. It is important to know what are the different kind of modules which SAP provides and which are implemented for organizations. Firstly, financial accounting and controlling. It's also called FICO module. This is the module which we are going to concentrate on in detail in the forthcoming videos. Secondly, material management, also called MM. Sales and distribution, also called SD. Production planning, also called PP. Quality control, plant maintenance, these both are used for plant related organizations. HR, that's for human resources, and it is also called human capital management. And lastly, there is project systems, called PS. There are other sub modules also within these main modules but we are mainly going to concentrate on SAP finance and controlling. Lastly, let's look at the R3 architecture which we discussed very briefly earlier. So as you see over here, there is a one tier configuration, two tier as well as a three tier configuration. SAP has reached a stage where they provide a three tier configuration which means the database, the application, and the presentation are all three different layers or three different tiers provided to an organization. You have a secure server where your database, that is your data and your information is stored. 
you have application processes which are the middle level of this three tier configuration and finally you have a presentation layer the presentation tier is nothing but when you use your laptop or computer or ipad these are the different presentation modes where you can see the sap screen and work on sap so that's all for now we will look into sap finance and controlling as an overview and in depth in the coming videos thank you very much for watching edupedia world videos